Welcome back. We have found the Savant, the entity that apparently kidnapped Spock. I guess uh, because Spock had psionic abilities based on what uh, the Virian told us. Which I guess just means telepathic. As we know Vulcans are. But how do we deal with this strange creature here, and how do we get Spock back? Captain, you misunderstand me. It is not my will to bring harm to any creature. I have taken two creatures that are without the most important thing in existence, joy, and given it to them in infinite variety and abundance. The Vurian was filled with despair at the death of her race. She was overwhelmed by sorrow and grief. I have healed her of these afflictions forever. As for the Vulcan, he has been conditioned to deny his emotions. I am bringing him in contact with a part of himself that will enhance his life. It is a gift of love. You have no right to inflict emotions on any being, regardless of how positive you may think them to be, without their consent. That seems accurate. I also doubt that he actually, like, fixed the Vurian's sorrow, rather than just overriding it with essentially fake emotions. Doesn't seem very healthy to me. I'll take therapy any day. Get a life. You can't just sit around feeling happy for eternity. What does that accomplish? <laughs> that is a good point. Love? Spock doesn't want your gift. He doesn't need your gift. Release him and let us return to our ship. You have no... Get a life. You can't just sit around feeling happy for eternity. What does that accomplish? I'm gonna say this. Accomplishment is transitory, Captain. All structures collapse. All civilizations die. All marvels and wonders are forgotten. If it is useless to build, then obviously only the moment matters. The pursuit of joy is the only worthwhile activity. All other pursuits are foolish and wasteful. Judgments of morality and what is a meaningful pursuit should be left to the individual. But joy means nothing without a life full of emotions. Without a broad range of experiences, we cannot appreciate joy. That's a good point. Does everything have to be permanent? Sometimes the most enjoyable activities are also the most temporary. It's kind of a similar thing as the second one. Judgment as everything has to Okay, I'm gonna permanent. say this. Sometimes Captain, I assure you that bliss and joy can be sustained through an eternity. Who would want anything else? I will send you back to your own ship and give you safe passage through the Antares Rift if you wish. I don't think we're getting through them. Uh, let's scan stuff around here. Captain, the readings are incomprehensible. The tricorder has no idea what all these waveforms represent. That's not very useful. It's some kind of life pod, Captain. I believe it is a Vurian design. Now this is strange. According to the tricorder, everything around us is organic. Feels like minerals to me. Tricorders don't lie, Pop. It could be a deception, Captain. The pouch appears to be composed of some sort of tanned animal hide. It's old, but not very warm. They seem more organic than mineral, Captain. Some of these descriptions are the same as on the other screen, it seems. Does not register as a life form, Captain. I guess that's because the Verian told us the Savant is everywhere. This is just like where he focuses his thoughts, whatever that means. Some sort of projection, not actually the Savant itself. No signs of life, Captain. Makes sense, I guess. The Virian we saw seemed to have been the only one to escape. 
Captain, I am getting organic readings. I can't explain this, except to say that every particle of matter around us is organic and radiates a psionic wave signature. Incredible. Incredible. Still incredible, I guess. Tanned animal hide. Similar to leather kit. And the floor is the same, I think. The ground registers as alive, Captain. Almost like some colony life form. It registers a psionic signature. Indeed. Alright, let's get that pouch. Might be useful. And let's keep going right so we can actually see if we can find Mr. Spock. Has to be around here somewhere. Also Spock. happy to be What have they done to you? Fascinating. Emotional intensity of a previously unknown level. Our link with the savant acts as an amplifier. The more minds in union with him, the greater the level of emotion. And happiness is a powerful emotion. Spock, do you want this? Happiness is a human desire, Captain. I am a Vulcan. I want to be free of emotions. This is the antithesis of my desires. Spock. Yeah, that seems kind of uh, expected that Spock would not want this. Maybe if we can convince the savant of that, he will let him go. Although I'm not very hopeful of that. Although it looks like common dirt. Okay, those descriptions are still the same. The wreckage of an alien derelict, the Vorian's life support pod. There are a hundred archaeologists who would love to be standing with you right now. I'll just bet. They're not, though, so... Tough luck for them. Mr. Spock, the best science officer in Starfleet. I'll take your word for it. James T. Kirk, in anguish due to his friend's predicament. Lieutenant Walker, who doesn't really know any of these bridge people very well. True. Lieutenant Sulu, who has always had a great deal of respect for Spock's scientific talents. Ensign Chekhov, who never expected to be traveling to another universe. Well, who would expect that, I guess? The pod was constructed from a high-grade Jupiterium steel alloy, Captain. No signs of life, no signs of power. My guess was that it was irreparably damaged on entry into this dimension. The Virian is lucky to be alive. Lucky, or maybe the Savant is um, responsible for that? Captain, the tricorder registers him as Spock. Okay, well, not a like imposter then, I guess. Good to know. I detect organic matter surrounding the craft, but the wreck is not organic. It is the only non-organic matter I can find, except for the items that were carried. That makes sense, I guess. Captain, Mr. Spock is normal, except for accelerated brain activity in the areas of his brain that control psionic abilities. He is currently in a mind meld. That doesn't sound comfortable to be in that kind of state continuously. And then again, I'm not a Vulcan, so it's not like I know. We must find a way to free Spock. That's what we're doing. Captain, there have been incidents where Vulcans who were deliberately exposed to emotions went insane. Fortunately, I do not appear to be in immediate danger. Let's hope so. Also, again, a cut-off voice line. It's getting kind of annoying. Why is this being done to Spock, Captain? What benefit does someone get from subjecting him to an emotion? We've seen energy forms that feed on hatred. Why shouldn't there be some creatures that feed on happiness? 
an addict who must have happiness and who relies on others to fulfill an increasing need for more happiness. I guess that makes sense. Captain, wouldn't stunning Mr. Spock break whatever control that he's under? Unless we deal with the creature that's doing this, it would only provide temporary relief. Yes, no long-term solution. I shall try to tell you what I know. The emotions make it difficult to communicate. The creature that has done this is called the Savant. A being of great power that has transformed itself into a creature of living emotion. It can form a link with any creature with psionic abilities, including Vulcans. <sighs> it taps into latent emotions and amplifies them, using them to increase its emotional s stability. What happens if it gets cut off from you and the Vurian? It would be alone, but could cope. We enhance its enjoyment. We are not essential to its survival. We are like a, a backup system. It relies on us for emotional support, but, but it, it could exist without us. Hmm. So, just breaking the link between the Savant and the Virian and Spock would not help us get rid of the Savant. Captain, I recommend you negotiate with Savant to escape this place. I am expendable. Expendable? Spock, I see that these emotions have given you a sense of humor. Yeah, Spock is uh, not expendable. No one is, of course. But Spock, definitely not. If we can find a weakness, we might be able to take you with us. What can you tell us, Spock? Spock, can you negotiate with the Savant on our behalf? Spock, we found some very strange stones. What are they? You actually can just ask all of this, so... We'll Expendable? Just start Spock, with number one. I see that these emotions have given you a sense of humor. <laughs> As usual, your illogic is beyond comprehension, Captain. If I were human, I might find it. Delightful. I'm sure. Captain, I recommend you negotiate with Savant to escape this place. I am expendable. Expendable? If we can find a weakness, we might be able to take you with us. What can you tell us, Spock? Its reliance on emotion is its main weakness. It is a creature of intense needs. And <laughs> despite having millions of years of joy, it still retains a, a subconscious fear of losing its joy, of experiencing negative emotions. Hmm, that might be useful. Captain. Expend if we could spot, can you negotiate with the Savant on our behalf? It refuses to deal with issues of logic and free will. It is not a violent creature, but is extremely fixated on its goals and believes what it does is morally justified. That does sound like it's going to be hard to argue with. Captain. Expend if we spot Spock, we found some very strange stones. What are they? This entire pocket dimension is organic and psionic in order to maintain the Savant's life force. Negative emotions that are suppressed might be absorbed in mineral-like pockets beneath the surface of this dimension. So the stones represent negative emotions that the Savant has repressed. Well, if Spock is right, maybe we can use them to make the Savant deal with those emotions, which it would probably not like. Anyway, I don't think there's anything else we can do on this screen. So let's head back. And 
guess we might as well try to negotiate with it again. Welcome. Have you come to ask for transportation back to your ship? Not without Spock. Savant, isn't there anything I can do to make you see reason? Release Spock or we will be forced to destroy you. Not without Spock. There isn't even an option to go back without Spock. That would have been like the ultimate irony. Also would, might have made the rest of the game a bit harder. Savant, isn't there anything I can do to make you see reason? Captain, I do see reason. My intellect is many orders of magnitude beyond yours. You should trust my judgment. I trust Spock's judgment and you're imprisoning his free will. Savant, creatures like ourselves need to be free to make mistakes and to learn from them. Only then can our intellects advance the many orders of magnitude that are needed to equal yours. That might work. Appeal to its superiority. Really? I see you have great power and great splendor, but I don't see great wisdom. I trust spots of aunt creatures Let's like ourselves need to be free to make mistakes and to learn from them. Only but I can elevate him to my level without any suffering. He need not experience the hardships that my race experienced. Is this not an extreme act of mercy? Okay, I think Spock is right. It is completely unwilling to see any other point of view. So negotiations seem to be out. Set back to the left because there's all those blue stones and now we have a pouch. I also would like to talk to the uh, Avurian again. You have met the Savant. Now you realize the true power of this place. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Through the Savant, I know your desires. Why should I help release the poor Vulcan into a life of misery? Because I need him to save the lives of over 400 people on the ship. Because Spock does not want artificial joy. He does not want this lie. Because I need him to save the lives of over 400 people on the ship. Very well, Captain. I will help you. You have met the Savant. Now you realize the true power of this place. You agreed to help us. You have already met the Savant, and he remains unmoved. I am taking the emotions in your mind and broadcasting them to him. Your concern for your ship, your love for your comrade. He regrets your feelings, but his purpose is unchanged. Well, that was worth a try, I guess. Doesn't seem to be working. Let's get the blue stones with the uh, I'll get pouch. Captain. I've put them in the pouch we found. Boy, am I getting an odd feeling from these stones. Alright, um... There's actually something else you can do with these stones. You can use them on each other. Which can give you some more insight about how they work. Use the blue on the red. I felt that too. A brief surge of conflicting emotions, anger and grief. And blue on yellow. Did you feel what I just felt? It felt like jealousy. I felt it too. I was angry at you. There was no rational reason, but for an instant, I felt like I should be commanding the Enterprise, and you were obstructing me. I don't know why I felt like that. You don't want to know what I was feeling. And I guess we'll never know. How about blue and orange? What was that? I don't know. I just felt... desperate. Irrational. I had conflicting impulses. Part of me wanted to attack someone, anyone. The other part wanted to run away. I don't know about you, but... The instant those stones were put together, I felt despondent. It's like I didn't want to live anymore. That someone was out to get me and I couldn't fight them. Maybe we should leave those stones alone. Yeah. Let's try combining red with the others. Don't have to do blue because we did that. Hmm. The instant those two stones came together, I remembered I had a quarrel with a friend of mine at the academy. 
I was so angry. I hadn't thought about that in years. I had a similar experience. How could I have forgotten about her? I wonder who he's talking about. Let's not do that again. I'm sorry, Captain. I just had the most horrible... I know, I think we all had that emotion. I'm glad I didn't have a phaser in my hands when you put those two stones together. Okay, that seemed like it was intense. How about red and green? Damn that, it's gone. For a moment I felt angry. Angry at myself for not moving the sheep away from that explosion. And I felt angry that I had not withdrawn from the Antares Rift. These stones definitely generate strong emotions. All right, let's do yellow with orange. That was a strange experience. I suddenly thought that the Enterprise was being stolen from me. I had a similar thought, only... I wonder what Dr. McCoy is going to say when we bring back samples of these stones. Oh, he'll be interested in that, all right. That's odd. I suddenly found myself doubting my ability to command the Enterprise. I had the weirdest image. I was fencing, and I kept dropping my foil. And I was, well... You wouldn't be interested. Hmm. The instant those two stones came together. Okay, another wrong voice line. Um, Alright, we have one combination left. Orange and green. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm losing my sanity. I don't know what these stones are doing to our emotions, but I don't like it. Neither do I. I think the pouch is just more of the blue stones. I'm not entirely sure. A pouch. Though. It is full of blue stones. I think those are the same one as the singular blue stone, which seems to be anger. All right, I'll give you one more chance. Welcome. Have you come to ask for transportation back to your ship? Not without Spock. Savant, isn't there anything I can do to make you see reason? Captain, I do see reason. My intellect is many orders of magnitude beyond yours. You should trust my judgment. I trust Spock's judgment and you're imprisoning his free will. Savant, creatures like ourselves need to be This is what we said last time. That didn't really. work. I see you have great power and great splendor, but I don't see great wisdom. Let's try this this time. I have taken sorrow and turned it into bliss. I have taken that which denied feelings and have shown him his true nature. Is that not wisdom? Alright, it's really not working. Let's see if we can make him feel something other than bliss. Like the emotions attached to these stones. This object has no effect against me. Hmm. That didn't work. How about the red one? This object has no effect against me. Alright, well, I'll keep trying. Yellow. This object has no effect against me. Okay, orange. This object has no effect against me. And I'm very doubtful at this point, but green. This object has no effect against me. Well, it seems like none of the single stones work, but how about a whole bunch of stones at the same time? You disturb my rest. Fortunately, I am not alone in bliss. Do not use such a tactic again on me. I warn you. What is this? What am I feeling? What have you done? What's the matter, Savant? Not feeling those good vibrations? Life isn't all happiness and joy. It's time you experienced a reality check. Is that sadness you're feeling, Savant? It couldn't be that those inferior humans have outwitted your great wisdom, could it? Egging it on might work. Not sure if it's necessary, though. What's the matter? Life isn't all happiness and joy. It's time you experienced a reality check. Let's go with this one. No. I have spent millions of years trying to escape the anguish. Misery is the destroyer of worthy souls, Captain. And you are destroying me. I'm not destroying you. 
Your own unwillingness to respect others is destroying you. Accurate. Free Spark and return us to our ship, and this will end. I didn't want to do this, but if I have to destroy you to free my friend, I will. Probably true, but we don't... We don't actually, uh, need to destroy him, I don't think. I am not destroying you. Your own unwillingness to respect others is destroying you. Am I really such a monster that I deserve such pain? You have lost respect for others, Savant. Everyone may have different goals, different ideals than you, and you have the right to pursue them. You need to respect their free will, even if it makes them miserable. You do not understand me, Captain, but I am in no mood to argue. You and your scientist may be freed. Enjoy your universe, Captain Kirk. Captain's Log, we are out of the Antares Rift and are on our way to Starbase 8, where the Enterprise has extensive repairs scheduled. All crew members, including First Officer Spock, are safely aboard. So, Spock, you mean you had an eternity of pure enjoyment and you gave it up? Affirmative, Doctor. That has to be the most illogical thing I've ever heard. Humans spend their entire lifetime dreaming of an eternity of pleasure. As do animals in the field. Perhaps humans are meant to be better than that. Perhaps we should dream of greatness and not simple gratification. Greatness is a term subject to individual interpretation, Captain. The savant viewed the pursuit of greatness as useless, because all great deeds and accomplishments are destined to be forgotten in cosmic terms. A cosmic being thinks in cosmic terms, Spock. But somehow that philosophy overlooks a lot of life's little pleasures. There's just one thing that bothers me about the whole thing. Really, Doctor? Spock finally got to enjoy himself, and I wasn't there to see it. Now that's something worth remembering. Message from Starfleet Command. On screen. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. All right. Next up is Museum Piece. How long until we reach Nova Atar, Ensign? About 23 hours, Captain. 22 hours, 53 minutes, and 17 seconds, to be precise. Spock, there's no need to be precise. We're going on shorely. Rest, relaxation, no calls from Starfleet. Captain, we have a message coming in from Admiral Richards at Starfleet. Um, on screen, Lieutenant. Hello, Jim. I know you're going on shortly, but... What is it, Chris? Well, since you're going there anyway, and it's only a small favor... Favor? I don't want to inconvenience you, but... Fine, you have it. What would you like me to do? We recently discovered that one of the exhibits in the Smithsonian Annex at Nova Atar is of great historical significance to the Serenzi, an influential family from planet Lockean. The museum is going to have a small ceremony to return the item. The Federation planned to send a representative, but, well, she couldn't make it. Since you'll be in the neighborhood, well, no dress uniforms. All you have to do is smile and shake hands. Smile, shake hands, it would be my pleasure, Admiral. My chief engineer had already promised to show me around. We'll be there. Thanks, Jim. I owe you one. Check your data files for details. Oh, one more thing, Jim. Due to the security concerns, you won't be allowed to bring any electronic equipment with you. Richard's out. Now, I was saying... Captain, do we really have to stand around and listen to speeches from a bunch of politicians? It won't be all bad, Scotty. The curator's a major cognac producer, and he asked us to show up early to thank us for our support. Captain, it'd be rude to keep a man like the curator waiting, what with an important diplomatic function to prepare for. All right, well, we got out of the Antares Rift. And, um, we never did find out if the Vurian really wanted to be there, or if we could help him. Hopefully he's happy there. And it looks like we are finally getting that shore leave that we've been promised since the second mission of this game. Actually, is this the same shore leave that we were promised at the end of the previous game? Not sure. Guess that depends on how well you did in the previous game as well. Anyway, we're finally going on shore leave. Just have to do a little diplomatic mission on the side. Sounds like we can relax and just enjoy ourselves. But we'll do that 
in the next video.